Hi there, Kevin Tharp here. Um, moving forward with some uh, information that really stands at the theoretical level when we're talking about web development. Um, but it's important stuff to understand and it's going to have a lot more significance as we move forward into the future as uh, search engines are moving away from um, simple keywords to uh, more semantic type search and uh, trying to anticipate what you're really looking for, not just the keywords you're searching for, it's going to become more and more important to uh, give meaning or semantics to the data that is housed in your pages. This video follows on the, the introduction to data and databases video, and then uh, the one that follows that is introduction to XML. So really this is the third in a series of uh, videos that are designed to get you thinking about how to use metadata and how to mark up your data. Uh, give it tags that have semantic meaning so that you can um, uh, allow search engines, uh, databases, other applications to know what content is inside of your tags. Whereas a paragraph uh, just tells you the, the structure. It's a paragraph. If you use, um, for instance, here's from XML from the last video, if you use company, then you're going to know that the, the information in there is uh, something about a company. Uh, for instance, last name, uh, if I was going to mark it up, and this is XML that you're looking at here, uh, I would mark it up with some kind of a tag similar to this that has a semantic meaning that says that the content that's inside of that uh, tag is a last name. So that's uh, XML. And you can watch the introduction to XML to, to get more details about that. Another thing that when we start moving towards talking about the web, we start talking about schemas. And schemas are something that really has only come into existence on the web uh, as part of the, the markup that's been enabled by HTML5. And I'm looking at schema.org here, uh, the website, and this is a collaborative website to develop some uh, schema libraries to allow web developers to uh, mark up their websites in a way that is going to uh, use microdata so that uh, your data is not just information on a page, but that there's uh, metadata in there or microdata in there that says what it's about. And so um, you can take a look at schema.org and get a better idea. Uh, but what you do is instead of just having, uh, say, a H1 that says avatar, um, you know, for, for a movie, uh, what you do, you start moving into these uh, item properties and information about that give you more information about it. So you might have that um, that H1 of an item property. Uh, it's still you're still going to have the name of the movie Avatar, but what you're going to do is you're going to give that microdata that says that the item property of that is an is a name. And you have to uh, then within that div, uh, you have to first off say that uh, this item is going to have a scope and that uh, scope means that anything inside that div is information related to the same topic and then then you tell them the item type which is a URL that points to this library um, on schema.org in this case it is movie so uh, to, to move us forward if I go back and I look at that XML that I was using uh, in the introduction to XML video, you'll see that this is data that was output uh, in XML and it, it's using um, last, uh, this whole code for last name. Well, if I'm going to start using that in a website to accomplish that same kind of thing, what I would do is I would uh, look up the library for a thing that is a person and then there's a whole series of properties in here that deal with a person alive, dead, undead, or fictional. So it, it sets out the parameters for uh, this is the circumstances when you should use this particular type of microdata. And um, scrolling down here, there's a whole bunch of information, but there's also an example down here. So that um, 
here's the original HTML. If we were talking about Jane Doe, and there's information about here, there's really no structure to that. It's just information. So if I'm looking at as a human, I might know that, oh, that's the name, that's their title, that's their address. Um, but there's nothing that really says that is what is in that content. So what we do is with schema.org, uh, what we do is we go ahead and we give it um, microdata. And here's what that looks like. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to put that information in a div and we're going to give it an item scope. That item scope says that everything that sits inside of this div, the div opens there and uh, let's see where does that div close because everything inside that div is going to apply to that. Okay, we've got nested divs in this case. So we've got um, an address here. That's still part of this person. So what we're doing is we establish this div. We say item scope. And everything inside of that div is going to apply to it. Um, so we then say the item type is schema.org and it's a person so we're dealing with a person here so that establishes immediately a context for the semantics um, and here we go into you create um, item properties that say that okay here's a name so that knows the the you then know that any content that comes within there Jane Doe in this case happens to be a name and you'll notice that that sort of corresponds to this kind of thing where you're giving it in XML here you're giving it uh, you're creating a markup language that tells you what is the property here you're doing the same thing here and so you've got other ones here's a div inside of it so here's the address so anything inside of this div is going to deal with the address and by the way this happens to be a postal address so the item type for this div is uh, the postal address but since that div is nested inside of the other div then it is the postal address of this person so you start developing a context so that the content that is on your page has more meaning it has a semantic um, meaning to it saying that here is the address of the locality here's the address region here's the postal code etc and so in that way you start building up uh, meaning to the data that you're going to use. Now I would go so far as to say that this isn't even the best tit uh, title here. Yeah, it's their name, but if I'm turning that into, that means Jane Doe is one element. If I was going to use this particular um, uh, set of uh, this schema, what I would do is I would look for family name, which is the last name of the person if you're in the United States. In other countries, that may be different depending upon their language. But I would uh, put the family name as a tag for the last name and give a name as the name for the first name. And then it gets into very specific uh, information just like here we separate last name and first name you can do the markup in schema.org to do last name and first name so what this does is it takes all the principles that we've talked about in the videos about introduction to data and databases and introduction to XML and it brings it that next level so that what we're talking about is how can we do uh, hypertext markup language using these schemas so that we're able to give it uh, the, the content more meaning than just the words or pictures that are in there so that uh, as the uh, the search algorithms and the and the different applications that interact with our web pages get more intelligent they're able to uh, pull that additional data from what we've done or that additional meaning to the data that we've used as our content and we're able to um, go into an even better uh, job of doing um, semantic markup because we're using this uh, microdata in order to uh, characterize this stuff that we have. That's all I've got for now. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.